Why is it that some web pages seem to spring to life with energetic, playful, and impactful animations, while others feel sluggish and dated? Well, I'm here to tell you that if you haven't really paid attention to easing functions, you're really missing out. Easing, in a nutshell, defines how the speed of an animation changes over time. For example, does it start slowly and speed up like a rocket ship, or does it begin abruptly and gradually slow down? Well, in my last video, I covered the basic eases in GSAP, explaining the fundamental concepts. But we're going to ramp things up a notch in this video, and we're going to start off with an easing function that's got a bit more character to it. This one's called Back. This is a pretty popular one I see on many sites. The idea behind back is that you get a brief overshoot or undershoot of whatever your target value is before returning back to it. Now check out this bird animation at the bottom of the page. Notice how it turns its head to its right before gently returning back to its left. And here's another example of a sunflower that scales up and overshoots a bit before setting back into its final size. If we check this out in the GSAP Ease Visualizer, we can see that although the animation target is set for minus 250 pixels on the y-axis, we actually overshoot that value before settling back into it at the end. And the cool thing with back is that we can pass it a numeric value to set the strength of the overshoot. So previously we had 1.7, and now we're going to use 4, which is a much more extreme overshoot. By the way, each of these easing types comes in three flavors. In, out and in out. So with back.in, we'd actually get an undershoot, I guess you'd call it, before returning to that final value. And with in out, well, we'd get an undershoot first, followed by an overshoot before it settles at the end. So here's an actual code example, and we could use this ease value in a gsap.tutween. Here you can see how the ball moves to the right, overshoots its target value of 200 pixels on the x-axis, before returning back to it. I don't know about you, but I gotta go check my Facebook in a minute to see if anybody liked my new picture of a hot dog. So we better hurry up and get right into the next type of ease. This one is called Bounce. And as the name implies, this one is really great for simulating things like bouncing balls. The idea is that we simulate the physical impact of an object, in this case a ball, colliding with the surface. And each bounce loses a little bit of energy. Check out this example from a site called poppingroup.com. As we can see, when that ball drops, each successive bounce has slightly less energy and less height, as the ball naturally loses energy before petering out. Now, in the visualizer, when we use a bounce.out type of ease, we can see how each successive curve of the ease gets just a little bit smaller. And check out this code example, where we can see the bounce of the ball diminishing each time. Oh look, it's a real example of a basketball bouncing in the real world. Next up is the elastic ease. The elastic ease has some similarity to the back and bounce type of eases. However, this one is more complex and has several rebounds to it. So this one is all about things that overshoot, but then oscillate a few times before coming to rest. So think about the springy motion of a rubber band, or a bungee cord, or a slingshot, or the spring of a diving board. This is an elastic and playful feel that's great for exaggerated, energetic animations. Now, notice something in the Ease Visualizer. There are actually two parameters that we can alter here. The first one's for amplitude, or magnitude of the overshoot. So, higher values give a stronger overshoot, and vice versa. And the second parameter gives us control over the duration of the oscillations. In other words, how long each oscillation lasts. So smaller values give quicker bounces, and larger values give slower, more relaxed bounces. Now check out my code example here, where I'm using an elastic.out ease, and as you can see, I'm passing in those two parameters or arguments. The first one having a value of one, which is the magnitude of the initial bounce, and the second one having a value of 0.1, which means we're going to have short, tight oscillations. So check it out. And let's lay back a little bit on those oscillations. Let's make it 0.3. That's a little bit more relaxed. How about a bit bigger of an overshoot? Let's set the first parameter to a value of 2. 
and make those oscillations a little bit more rapid, 0.2. If you're interested in learning how to bring your web pages to life with cool animations, GSAP, and scrolly telling techniques, check out my course, Scrolly Telling 101. Since I launched the course, the response has been amazing, with students commenting on the wealth of web dev tips and tricks included in the lessons. I'm going to leave a link down below for you, and you can start by checking out some of the free preview videos there. I think you're going to love it.